Shalom viewers. I am Pastor Charles Mwabaza. I'm your brother and your friend. Welcome to our Royal Priesthood Online Family Program. The Royal Priesthood Online Family is a new program which I hear with I'm here with launching today to accommodate all my viewers, the Royal Priesthood uh, Family Church here in Voi, our Mother Church, the International Fellowship for Christ Network of Churches uh, that has branches all over Kenya, and all my friends across the world who are being blessed through this uh, online program. Um, I welcome you uh, to become members of this particular platform, this program. Membership is for those who, after following these programs for a while, will commit themselves to subscribe, to like, and to share these messages to their friends and their own other platforms. That way, even if you are not able to preach like I'm doing or teach, you become a messenger of good news. Just by sharing these messages, you'll be able to become a blessing to someone. You will impact a life you will add value to people and most importantly God will reward you because my purpose statement remains the same I'm here to gather to equip and to mobilize I want to to, to gather us to gather uh, through uh, our screens we gather around our screens I want uh, us to be equipped through these teaching programs uh, online and I want to mobilize you to be able to share this same message with your friends. Don't be selfish. Share this message. Just click one button and you'll have shared with many people a message that could change their lives, that could grow their, their lives and could bring them to their next level. With these few remarks, I declare the Royal Priesthood Online Family is herewith officially launched. Today we shall proceed with session two of the topic understanding your calling to service is the key to your success and the key to attracting God's blessing. Picking from our last session, in Mark chapter 11 verse 11, Jesus arrives 
uh, Jerusalem on a donkey, which he was, which he was the first person to ride amidst much jubilation. He enters the temple, looks around, and returns to Bethany without any action, because the Bible says it was late in the evening. It turns out, as we continue with these stories, as you read the, through the, the chapter, you discover that uh, Jesus in that week made three trips from Bethany to Jerusalem and back. This brings us to the end of that first trip, which started with, uh, with sending his, uh, his uh, uh, disciples to go and pick that uh, donkey, uh, riding the donkey and coming to Jerusalem. And when he comes to Jerusalem, he doesn't do anything. He's just uh, uh, celebrated. And after that celebration, he goes back. He spends his night in Bethany. Now, on this uh, second day, he leaves Bethany very early before breakfast. And, you, and, and I know for sure that uh, there, are, there are three friends, a family of Jesus that lived in Bethany. Uh, the guys were Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. I'm always tempted to believe they are the guys that hosted him in Bethany for the three nights. But again, it, I'm a bit confused. How come this time he would leave without breakfast from his very hospitable friends, especially the ever-serving Martha? How could he have allowed Jesus to leave without breakfast? So maybe um, I'm led to assume the reason why he left uh, before breakfast, because the Bible is also silent, maybe it's because he changed venue. He did spend with his friends, the Lazarus and uh, his sisters. So um, he leaves without breakfast anyhow. And what happens next was unprecedented. The Bible says he was hungry. And as he walked along, he saw a fig tree from a distance. Beautiful leaves, but no fruit. And with the hope of finding fruit, he looked at it, and guess what? There were no fruits. And because it is said a hungry, a hungry man is an angry man, it's, he takes it out on the fig tree. He speaks to the fig tree, and the fig tree is cast. It was not... It was innocent because the Bible is very clear. It was not the time for figs, but it was still cast. We have our lesson number one right there. Our lesson number one is this. Appearances can be very deceiving. Not everything that glitters is gold. My friend, it is not enough to wear very beautiful leaves. We need fruit. Brand yourself all you want. But remember, the key to success is delivering on your mandate. That is what bearing fruit is all about. Bearing fruit includes timely quality service delivery. It includes adding value to people's lives. Your service must add value to people. It must be timely. You cannot... Um, you cannot do tomorrow what should be done today. If you are a businessman, you must deliver on the day you said you will deliver. Uh, sometimes I have a problem with carpenters and, uh, and uh, tailors. When they tell you, pick your shirt, pick your trouser on this day, you, you, you'll be given three or four more appointments before, you, before it is delivered. That is not good for your business. That is leaves, no fruit. Also, carpenters, if, you, if, they, if they are making a table for you, you, you may be given four, three, appoint, three to four appointments before you can get the table. That is not good. Timely quality, de, uh, co timely quality service delivery. And then you add value to people. And then for us pastors, you must have content. You must have substance in what you are speaking to people. And then your presentation must have excellence. Do everything with excellence. Now, let me say this. 
Your advertisements are your leaves. Like Jesus, your customers are hungry for your service. They want to receive what you offer, what you promise to offer them. And they can be as harsh as Jesus was to you, the way Jesus was to the fig tree. For us pastors, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, people perish. But they are not that foolish to wait till they perish with you. A priest once said, they will move to another parish. And in, in, in IFC, in Royal Priesthood Family Church, we say they will move to another pastorate. So you've got to be careful that you deliver on your mandate. Let's continue. In Mark chapter 11 verse 14, Jesus addresses the fig tree and tells it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. His disciples had it, but remained silent. Now I want uh, to leave that for the next session. Why were they silent? We'll continue from there. But for today, he proceeds to the temple. And when he arrived at the temple, he began to throw out traders and their buyers. He began to turn over the tables of the money changers. No one was allowed to leave the temple with anything. Then he taught this great lesson. Is it not written, my father's house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? but you have made it a den of thieves. Sticking with our theme that our call to serve is the key to success and uh, to God's blessing, here comes our lesson number two. Lesson number one dealt with success. You succeed by delivering on your mandate. But lesson number two you attract God's blessing by keeping your market completely separate from the house of worship. Even if you are a pastor, you are not there for business. You are there to offer service. You are called to serve. And as you serve genuinely, you serve sincerely, God will take care of your needs. Do not commercialize the house, of God, the house of prayer, as the Bible calls it. Freely you received, freely we must give. The, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not yours for you to be able to sell them, to use them uh, to, 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 to enrich yourself. That cannot be your purpose. The gifts you are given to serve God's people, to promote his kingdom. And let me tell you, our God is a good God. When you promote his kingdom, he'll promote yours. I assure you, he's a faithful God. He's a very wonderful master that we are serving. Therefore, remember, you are a steward of the gifts. You are a manager. You are not the owner. May God help us to become faithful stewards of the gifts of God. Let's have a close look at the story. Jesus said, the temple is the house of prayer. It was the only temple for the whole nation. The rest were synagogues. And synagogues were gathering venues for the purpose of in-depth teaching by the priests. And at the temple, every prayer needed a specified kind of offering or sacrifice. So people came from everywhere in Israel and beyond to pray and to give an offering or a sacrifice according to the need they were presenting to God. So visionary businessmen designed a service to sort these people out. The problem of having to drive the animals that were needed for sacrifice all the way from the, 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 uh, the other corner of the nation right to Jerusalem with some cows, with some, with some sheep, and with some birds just to come and give an offering. So what they did, 
they set a marketplace where you would come with money and then you buy uh, the animal you need for your sacrifice and then they get the cash and you get the animal, you go in and you give the offering that is needed for your kind of prayer. But as time went by, uh, making money, making a profit became more important than facilitating the worship. So what happened? Now it is not service, now it is business. It started as service, but it became business. So be now when uh, profit and monetary gain took center stage, people, uh, uh, the, the presence of God became less important. Uh, the fear of God, the reverence for the house of God began to diminish. People lost the fear of the house of God. Now, slowly, they started selling inside the house of worship. They began to bring their merchandise right in there. And slowly, as the fear also reduced, dubious deals, as we call them in Kenya, began to be done right in the house of worship. No wonder Jesus said, you have made my, the house of prayer, my father's house, a den of thieves. Please let us be careful how we handle the house of prayer. At this juncture, I'm very sure we are pointing fingers at those businessmen and saying, they are evil, they are very bad. How could they turn the house of prayer into a den of thieves? We think we are any better. No, we are not. I can tell you for sure, most of us ministers of the gospel, we start out very well, very genuinely. We, 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 we start with that view, we are here to serve God. We are here to do ministry. And we are focused on prayer. We are focused on service delivery. We are focused on seeing the people of God blessed. We are focused on seeing the needs of the people met by prayer. But somewhere along the way, it becomes, we, it becomes more important to impress people. Excellence is good. But it's not the main thing. It becomes more important uh, how I dress, how expensive my clothes are, uh, how expensive is my car, how do I arrive in church, how do I arrive in meetings. And before long, we, we, we come to a place where we have made our lifestyle so expensive that now we begin to manipulate our, our followers to be able to sustain a lifestyle that uh, we, have, we have found ourselves in. So uh, we begin slowly to sell some funny things. I don't want to mention them because you all know what kind of, uh, of, uh, of things are sold in some of our today's pulpits and altars. What we are supposed to do is to focus on prayer and the word. That's what uh, the disciples or the apostles told the church in Acts. When they began to serve tables and then there was, there was confusion, there was complaint that some, some, some poor people are not being attended and some are being attended better than the others. And uh, when they called that committee of seven, they said, it is not proper for us to continue serving tables. We shall focus on prayer and the word of God. That statement still stands true today. And you believers, as you receive from God, give your thanks offering. Give your free offering. Give it unto God. That is key. By the way, I will, I'm here to tell you that for you to attract God's blessing into your service, into your ministry, into your business, the key is how you give to the kingdom of God. So, the key is focus. The key to giving is focus. When you focus on the servant that is serving you, your giving will be very poor. You will look at me and think, well, his budget, his family budget could be this much. If I give him this, uh, well, this will take him a week. 
Well, according to the suit he's putting on, I think this much is, is enough for his suit. Look at God. If Jesus was the, because it is Jesus who has healed you. It is Jesus who has performed a miracle to your life. So don't give to the pastor. Give to God. Look at God. Let our focus be God. The pastor, your focus is God. You are not looking at the people. So you don't need to manipulate them. God will deal with them. And for you, don't look at us, look at God. When miracles happen, I told you, the difference between us and the donkey is one. When the donkey carries Jesus, people see Jesus more than they see the donkey. But with us, uh, even in giving, people look at us instead of looking at God. It, we are the donkey carrying Jesus. So you're offering, give it unto God and it will improve. Your giving will improve the moment you begin to give to God, not to meet the needs of your pastor. The Bible says, the moment you give, God will receive your offering. And when he receives it, the same measure you used, God does not have measures. He uses your measure. If you use a two kilogram container to give, he will take the same two kilogram container, fill it up, shake it, fill it again to overflow and give it to you. That two kilo container could be pennies and coins. I tell you, my friend, you'll have a very heavy load of coins to carry home, but they have no value. Just imagine if you're giving him the, 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 the bigger notes, the thousands, your, your, your offerings are by the thousands. Then God fills that thousand, let's call it a 10 kilo or a 100 kilo uh, uh, container. He fills it with that, presses it down, shakes it, and then fills it again to overflow and then throws it at you with the thousands. My friend, you'll be blessed. Therefore, focus on God. Do it for God. When you do it for God, it is possible to do that. Now, what about this guy that will give uh, um, uh, money transfer from account to account? By the way, that's the only way we can do it today. We can only give uh, through um, the M-Pesa, through the bank. Now, when you do those transactions that way, and you are doing it to God, I want to tell you, God will bless you. Just try it. Our God is a faithful God. And the only way to attract God's blessing to your business is through your giving. Key number one, deliver on your service. You cannot be lazy and be blessed. Deliver on your promises. Deliver on your work. Quick quality delivery of your service is key. Number two, your giving unto God, not to man. Give it unto God. Focus on God and your, your, and your offering will go higher. Focus on the man that, you are, that has served you, the man that has prayed for you, the man that has taught you, the man that has preached to you. Your offering will go down. With it, also, your respect for the house of God will begin to diminish because you'll bring it to the size of the servant. And then we'll go back to the same trap that the people Jesus chased from the temple were in. We begin to trade among ourselves. We are, you are not trading with me as your pastor. You are trading with the king of kings. It is him who will reward you. Therefore, as you give, focus on him. May God bless you. I want to pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewer. He has heard your word. I've given him two keys today. The key of delivering on their mandate. The key of fruit bearing. The key of service delivery. The service will add value. And the key to attract your blessing through giving. Lord, we repent for doing business among ourselves. We give like we are giving to one another, human beings. Lord, I pray that we may have our givings change focus. Let's give to you. Father, I thank you and Father, I bless you. I declare a blessing 
on the work of everyone that has had this message and has the intention to improve on their giving, to improve on their service delivery. Father, I thank you, and Father, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, believing and trusting. You have not given your life to Jesus. I want to give you this opportunity to turn your life to Jesus. We are living at very dangerous times. What is happening in the world with this coronavirus is pointing to the fact that we are living in the very last days. It is time to prepare for eternity. Should you die before Jesus comes, where will you go? And should Jesus return soon before you've repented, repented, where will you spend eternity? Please say this short prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I repent of all my sins and I turn over my life to you. Be the Lord over my life. Be the God over my life. Protect me. Give me the power to be made the child of God and give me power to overcome sin, to overcome the devil, to overcome the world, and to overcome my own self. Father, I thank you. And Father, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, believing and trusting. Amen and amen. The Bible commands us not to come to his house empty-handed. I therefore give you an opportunity to give your offering. Uh, my, the, the contacts are on the screen, the m -Pesa number. Also, the pay bill for our church is also on the screen. Feel free to give your offering. For the family members, the Royal Priesthood Family Church, you know what to do. Your tithes and offerings are welcome. And for everyone that is going to give, may God richly bless you. May God take you to your next level. And I command the devourer to take his hands off everything that is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet again, don't miss our Easter service. Same time, same place. God bless you. I am Pastor Charles Molaza. I am your brother and your friend.